they are measuring the nuchal fold, which is sort of like a, a skin fold, a fat pad on the back of the baby's neck. And that's there in every developing embryo, but in a person that's got Down syndrome, it's, it's thicker. So when they measure it, it comes up as a, an increased measurement. So that's the nuchal translucency, and it's put together with the results from a blood test that has hormonal markers in. And also the woman's age and weight and whether she smokes and things like that. So it all goes into a computation and that's what comes up with her individual risk factor for Down syndrome. Information wise, I wouldn't say the midwife gave me much information at all. Really, I think she asked one question and that was, what would you do if you had a Down syndrome child? And I was, my answer was, uh, I really don't know. We had the scan. And then we were both like, oh, we'll see what happens then, and then we'll make a decision. You know, it was this, this having the scan didn't mean that then if it was if we were in risk of having a Down syndrome child, that that meant that then we wouldn't keep the child. That was we would take that discussion then. Yes, I remember being offered it, and I turned it down um, because even before I got pregnant, I'd had I'd been thinking about what I would do if the baby had a disability of any kind and I decided it wouldn't make any difference to me I wouldn't have a termination anyway um, so I couldn't really see the point in having the test I feel less confident that I myself would be able to rise to any challenges that fatherhood could throw at me but I feel that with such a strong wife I feel confident to do it. I think that a lot of people go into it thinking, you know, whatever you recommend for me, if it's available to everybody, yes, I'll have it. I'll have everything because I want to take every, every want every chance that my baby will be, will be fine, will be perfect. I didn't think that having the screening was necessary. Like, oh, what are we going to do if it's if it's a high risk? It's more a case of wanting to be best prepared, and of course, making a very well informed and very well thought out decision. Angie's had a lot of trouble with him establishing reality from fiction. So a lot of things that he watches on telly, he can't differentiate that from real life. I love them sports, that's my favourite thing. I got on duty or videos. My favourite bond is sports, wasn't it? I got double of some tattoo in my arm. It would have been a lot harder at 12 weeks to find out that because the pregnancy was that less advanced and I suppose an abortion would have seemed maybe more tempting. And I think now we just as a society have such a negative image because we're now screening for them to, you know, and if we find out then we get rid of them. It's like, well, how does that leave you if you're actually thinking, do you know what? I don't want to. I want to carry on with this. This is my baby. I just think we've now got this societal pressure that they're not good enough to be in our society. You feel like a child again when you're with them. Like you go out for the day and you can kind of like misbehave. You can go out and have a lunch and go shopping. And I can say things to Sam that I wouldn't say to normal people. Well, I mean, everywhere we go, everybody knows Daisy. Everybody says hello to her. Everybody smiles at her. She's just like, she's a ray of sunshine for the whole world. So you could be terminating a little life that had the potential to do great things. Or, you know, what are we judging it against anyway? Is it that everybody that gets born needs to be able to go to university and have careers in these? Or, you know, is the fulfillment in actually just living in this world and going about your daily life? And sometimes I have got good friends. I, I haven't now. Now mine is not get a new one. I worry about when she's a teenager because she's a very pretty girl and she's very trusting and I just don't want her to ever be out anywhere <laughs> without someone looking after her and making sure she's safe. If it was second child, I would definitely think about how would my first child react because it would take a lot of attention away from them because of the support the other child needed. It's never an easy decision. So therefore I'm never ever gonna judge anyone for making that decision that they don't want it because that's hard for them. And imagine if you've tried, if you're like, since you are high risk, the older you get, 
probably means that we spent a lot of time trying to get a baby, then deciding not to have that when you finally are there must be heartbreaking. Think of all those children that were, are being born with Down syndrome and the parents can't deal with it. You know, then you've got to try and find parents that are willing to take that on. Or, you know, it could be huge. And I guess when I made the decision to become a parent anyway, that I was ready to have a child, and I guess that that decision was made based on the fact that I would, feel, I felt I could be a great dad to any child with any kind of complications such as that. Why is it so important for people nowadays to know everything? What are you going to do about it at the end of the day? All you can hope for is the best. And if the best is not good enough, then what? At the end of the day, you're going to love that child more than anything you've ever experienced before. If they're not in my dreams, I see you, I see you. That's how I know you go on. Forever you are, and I hear in my heart, and my heart will go on. Oh.